Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our weekly study. I'm glad that you're tuning in. We are going to begin this week by studying um, or picking up still in chapter 25, um, but now beginning with um, verse 19. We'll be looking and studying together chapter 25, verses 19 through 26. So I'll go ahead and read them aloud. You'll also see them on the screen. And then we'll begin to think about these verses together. But before we jump into these verses, I wanted to frame for you what we're about to study. Beginning here in verse 19 of chapter 25, the story will now shift to Isaac. Up until now, we have been dealing with Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, and then Abraham, Sarah, and then Isaac and Ishmael. Now, as we turn towards these verses, um, as we know from last week, Abraham has passed away, um, and the new generation will emerge. And so I wonder for you, um, or I'm kind of wondering aloud for ourselves, what is going to happen in this new generation? Some of us may be pretty familiar with the story, and so we might know what is going to happen. Um, but I, what, I, what I want you to have in mind um, is to think about what it means to move from one generation to the next. Sure, we'll learn about the particulars of the story about Jacob and Esau, um, and we'll notice, I think we'll notice very um, quickly, um, that the same um, problems that existed in the previous generation will come up again in this generation. Cloaked in different um, ways and kind of the details will be a little bit different, but many of the stories will be similar. And so what that makes me wonder at first, and this is my question to you to think about um, in parallel as we think about the story, is what are the ways that you um, carved out, set out a different path um, than your parents? What are the ways that you followed in your parents' footsteps? And what are the ways that you set out um, on your own path? I know for myself, you know, at a, just a basic level, um, people say, you look just like your father. So there's a basic level that you might look like a parent, a basic level that people might say, you talk just like your mother. Um, your voice sounds just like her. And then there's also deeper questions, ones that I want you to think about and engage um, as you're studying these verses together with me, maybe saying aloud to yourself, and then maybe also when we have a chance to visit in person that we'll talk about as well. What are the ways that you have set out that different path than your parents? Um, they've raised you, um, blessed you, um, and now when you had a chance to grow up and start your own family and go on your own path, um, you went on a different path. Um, what was that like? Um, what were the blessings and challenges that you faced? So I want you to be able to think about that um, in parallel, um, in stereo, so to speak, with, um, with what we'll be studying together. So sorry about that interruption, but I think that's just an important note um, before um, to think about as we, um, as we begin with these verses. This is the story of Isaac, son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took his wife Rebekah, daughter of Betuel the Aramean, of Padan Aram, sister of Lavan the Aramean. Isaac pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren, and the Lord responded to his plea, and his wife Rebekah conceived. But the children struggled in her womb, and she said, If so, why do I exist? She went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord answered her, Two nations are in your womb. Two separate peoples shall issue from your body. One people shall be mightier than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first one emerged red like a hairy mantle all over. So they named him Esau. Then his brother emerged holding onto the heel of Esau, so they named him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. 
So we're here, we're starting to learn about Isaac. We're eagerly as readers um, anticipating what will happen to him. And the first verse that starts off um, in verse 19 tells us all about Abraham. This is the story of Isaac. Okay, great, we're ready to listen. Son of Abraham, Abraham begot Isaac. We know that already. Why is the Bible, why is the Torah telling us this detail again? Um, I want to lift this up because I think this goes back to the way that we think about um, generations and think about our own paths. Um, we will learn that Isaac is very connected to Abraham, um, and it will be hard for him to create his own path. The verses are already kind of foreshadowing for us by including that Isaac is the son of Abraham, Abraham begot Isaac, that Isaac is going to have that kind of chip on his shoulder where he's looking back, seeing what, um, what did Abraham do, um, and trying to figure out for himself how he um, kind of creates his own path. Um, we're hopeful. Isaac, we learn, and we already know, marries Rebecca. Um, but all of a sudden, in verse 21, we learn that they're not able to conceive. Our hopes and dreams for the future generation our hopes and dreams for our own selves are then stopped. We face a block, an obstacle, a block. Um, for Isaac and Rebecca, um, the dream of perpetuating their family, of creating a legacy, of carrying on what was previously Abraham's path and now setting out for their own on their own path. Um, this is a deep struggle that they face. Um, so Isaac pleads with the Lord Isaac prays to God on his wife's behalf, on their behalf, um, because they're not able to conceive, conceive, um, and God listens. But the problems don't stop there. As we all know from our own lives, one obstacle, one struggle, we might be able to, to hurdle it, to, 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 catap to jump over it, um, and yet the next problem comes up. So I, um, Isaac and Rebecca conceive. Rebecca is pregnant, but the pregnancy is difficult. The children struggled in her womb. You can imagine, for all of you who are tuning in and who have had the, um, the honor, the privilege of being able, the challenges of um, carrying a child, the, the, the pains of pregnancy. So the children are struggling in her womb, and she says, if this is so, why do I exist? Um, she asks the question that we all ask at all moments when we're struggling. Why is this happening to me? And for us as readers, we then um, notice that this struggling, this fighting in her womb, this is, this is ominous. It's clearly coming to teach us something. And so Rebecca thinks that too, and she searches it out. She inquires of the Lord. She asks God, why is this happening to me? Right, just like each of us in moments of struggle, call out and ask to God, why is this happening? Rebecca, um, like many folks in the Bible, um, receive immediate responses in the ways that we um, do not receive um, nowadays in our own lives. Um, or at least in the same ways, in the same channels. Um, so she receives an answer. God says, the Lord says to her, right, that this struggle that you're feeling um, is actually going to be indicative, it's a harbinger of a national struggle um, that will exist. Not only are there two children in your womb, you will be having twins, but these twins will be the heads of different nations. Um, and then very ominously, or very kind of cryptically, um, God finishes the, the oracle, the, the divine message, by telling Rebecca that the older shall serve the younger. Hmm. The older shall serve the younger. That doesn't seem to be the normal case of the world, the normal way that things go. But if we'll remember, this is actually the normal way that Genesis works. All of our stories talk about the younger supplanting the role of the older. You'll remember with Isaac, right? Isaac, who's 
going to be Jacob's father. Isaac, too, was the second born. Um, Jacob himself, as we'll learn, as we just already read in the verses, but we'll learn is the second born. Joseph, born much later. This is a continuing pattern um, throughout the stories um, in Genesis. Why that is? Well, I'd be curious to hear what you think. Why is it that it always seems to be, or the pattern is, that the younger is going to be the one um, who's going to be in charge. The older will serve the younger. It's interesting to note here as well that Rebecca is the one who receives the prophecy. Isaac is the one who prays. We then, then conceive. And then Rebecca, faced with this difficult pregnancy, doesn't turn to Isaac and say, hey, what's going on? At least from the text that we have in front of us, it's Rebecca who goes out to ask God what is going on. And it's Rebecca who then receives that prophecy. We don't learn, or we, it doesn't say at least explicitly in the Torah and the text here in our Bible, that then Rebecca relays that message onto Isaac. Could assume perhaps that she does. But in some ways, um, she holds on to this on her own. And this will be a helpful point um, in learning about the story going on um, later. Um, we are going to learn about Rebecca's actions in making sure that this prophecy takes place, that the older shall serve the younger, that it's going to be the younger, that we'll learn Jacob, who is going to be um, kind of the, the heir to the, to the throne, so to speak. So just be aware on the lookout of how, of how um, Rebecca will act. Behold, we learn that she is, she learns that she is going to give birth, and whoa, and they're actually twins. Um, God was right in God's prophecy. And when we learn about twins, I think what the, uh, what the Bible, what the Torah is trying to teach us already, already immediately at this moment is that we already know that transi transmission from one generation to the next is difficult. Just as we talked about in the intro, um, before we jumped into the verse and as we've been thinking about um, as well throughout these verses, what is it going to be like for Isaac and Rebekah to pass on um, what they learn? Or for Isaac in particular, what is it going to be like to be the son of Abraham and yet be his own son, and be his own father? Um, and he is going to have two children who are going to be twins. So it, it raises the question, how am I going to transmit this on? Who is going to be my rightful heir, especially when the two are twins, in some ways identical? What we'll learn in a moment is that, as we already read, they're not going to be identical in terms of their physical looks, but as twins, they're just, you know, moments apart in birth. Um, Esau emerges red like a hairy mantle, a mantle meaning like a cloak. So you can kind of imagine this, a very ch hairy child um, that emerges. Um, and so they called him Esau. Why is that? Um, just a little Hebrew note here. Um, Esau, or known in he Hebrew as Esav, those, those letters, ayin, um, sin, vav, asu, um, many commentators um, seem to in interpret or understand that as he has he comes out already made. Um, asa in Hebrew means to make, or asui is it is done, it is created, and so it kind of looks when he emerges that he's already like a fully kind of grown, developed child. He's he's hairy already, um, and yet what we'll learn is that even though he seems to be more physically mature. He is going to serve the younger. He's going to serve onto Jacob, right? We're, and we learn about Jacob, that Jacob is emerging, holding on to um, Esau's heel. Um, and that's also where you get the, the Jacob, or in Hebrew, the Akav, Yaakov. That's where you get onto the heel. So it's, he's, called, he's um, named after the fact that he holds on to the heel. Um, it's... So far, this, I, I, I'm, just, I'm always moved, even if I've read this story countless times, and the ability to sink my teeth in, um, to think about these verses, just, you know, verses 19 through 26 already bring up for me um, so many interesting things to think about. Um, and so I hope you're enjoying, and we will um, continue with our study uh, next week and learn about um, Jacob and Esau as they grow up. Um, but for now, we just learned about um, this new generation um, and thinking about what it means to enter into a new generation. Um, so I hope you enjoy it, um, and I hope you have a wonderful day, a great week, and you'll join with me next week.